Good morning guys, welcome to Hidden Heights Farm. Today is the day of Daisy surgery. Uh, my wife Rachel's with me. Hey guys. My name's Kevin, if you're new to the channel. I know a lot of you have been following us and Daisy's journey on this whole procedure. And we finally got the diagnosis here at the hospital, uh, Oklahoma Veterinary Specialist. They've been wonderful to work with. Uh, we just pulled in, we just called in. Um, they're still doing the curbside. So you pick a parking spot with the number on it, you call them and tell them where, and then they come out and they get Daisy and do all that stuff. But uh, we got her medicine. This was uh, specially made by a compounding pharmacy here in Tulsa. We had to make a special trip last week just to come pick it up. And uh, <laughs> Daisy absolutely hates the cage, but especially after last time that we came and she had the procedure, she had a CAT scan and um, some other procedures done just to verify that it wasn't cancer, that it wasn't a tumor, yeah. and that it was, what she has is aspergillosis. It's a fungal infection that gets up in her nasal cavity, if you guys are new, and um, it kind of grows these little mushrooms. So what they're gonna do today is they're actually gonna go in and they're gonna it's take okay, something baby. and try to scrape all that out of her nose. Then they're gonna drill a hole somewhere in her head into her nasal cavity and inject this medicine in there and that should kill all that fungal stuff and she can lay down in her cage yeah. she just hates it there you go She's, she does not like riding in the car she's not like skeeter no um, who loves car rides anytime she's not around her goats if she's she away stresses. from them even at our house if she can't see her goats, she stresses yes out. um what else i was gonna say something else what was i gonna say oh the reason we got the cage is after the last time I brought her here, she kind of freaked out when she woke up from being sedated. So the vet said, it, yeah. I can let her go if you have a cage or something to put her in, but if you don't, um, she's still a little sedated. When she woke up from her first sedation, she just went crazy, like excited, yeah. hyper, scared. So we don't want to take the chance for her safety and ours um, driving down the road. We're in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It takes us a, like an hour to get here. Yeah, it's a long so. drive. We don't want to take that risk, for sure, like Kevin said. And, right. And you guys seen in my video the other day, I was feeding Daisy the eggs. <clears throat> and that worked for a couple of days, but she's been on basically a liquid diet for the last two, maybe two or three days. Turn the air back um, on for her. Because her mouth like it is so super sensitive or something's going on with her gums i don't know if it's to do with this fungal or if it's maybe a side effect to the medicine we're giving her so to remedy that because i mean she was to the point she wasn't eating her dog food at all yep. so <clears throat> in the mornings i would give her milk and raw eggs and put her medicine in with that and she drank that really good that was fine and then in the evenings on her second round of medication, I got um, canned dog food and gravy and put in the eggs and milk in it and her medication. And it worked for a day or two. And then she got to where she wouldn't even hardly eat the little bits of dog food. It's okay, sissy. So she's just basically been on a liquid diet the last couple days. See your tail, Daisy. Um, she is a filthy mess. When I went out to get her this morning, she was actually laying on top of the compost pile on the very sleeping, top and we just got like three inches of rain we just cleaned out our barn so it's all dirt floors and it was a mud hole i had to pick her up and put her in the back of the car and uh <laughs> she got me all muddy i had to go change real quick but we're gonna wait for the nurse to come out and get her and then we'll kind of give you guys an update i'll try to record the phone call with the doctor when he calls and hopefully he'll kind of go over the procedure with us but thank you guys for uh tuning in today yes, thank and you. uh for all of, the, all of you that's been praying and keeping up with Daisy's adventure, she appreciates it, I know. Um, she, uh, yeah. she 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 feels like she's in Hollywood when we walk out there with the camera. I, it just feels like, it feels like she knows that if I got the camera, hey, I'm getting attention today. So she's a YouTube dog for sure, right, Daisy? She's, she's not smiling. No, she's, she's ready to get home. She hears these dogs barking over here in the car nearest so she knows what the car ride means and yeah. she's gonna have to go to the doctor when i pull up to the barn with the car she runs so she runs and hides yeah all right so we're gonna get off here and wait for this nurse to come get her and then then we'll be back
It's okay, baby girl. Good girl. Good girl. Right? Yep. Yep. Just double checking. I double, triple check it. Sure. Do you want this blanket to wrap her up in? No. It's okay, good girl. It's okay, Daisy. All right. You want this on her? Yes, please. I think she went fine with you last time. Yeah, she did. We pull up with the to her barn with the car. She knows she runs from us. <laughs> oh no, not yeah. again. Yeah. All right, Miss Daisy. Let's go get you taken. Bye, Daisy. I love you. Yes. Okay. yes, got it in my pocket. We'll talk to you guys soon. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good girl. Okay, I don't know why I didn't hit the record button right there, but the nurse just come out and explained all of that, and I uh, wasn't thinking. I didn't think to hit the record button. <laughs> And it's weird that Daisy will jump out and just go with the nurse. She just goes right in there like it's nothing. She leads her with the leash. Just like she's a city dog going for a walk. <laughs> but anyways, guys. So she explained to me, and I will do my best. Rachel can maybe help me. Man, she stinks. <laughs> yeah, she does. Alright, so what they're going to do is they're going to they're gonna go get her checked out right now. Get her weight and all that and they're gonna get all the medicine laid out it's 8 44 right now in the morning they're gonna try to start the procedure around noon and what they're gonna do is they're gonna sedate her uh, the doctor's gonna go up with the scope and uh, perform a rhinoscopy which is a uh, little little uh, I don't know what you call it. it's a scope that goes up through her mouth up around her nasal cavity and comes back through the backside and it has little knives and it has a camera and a light on it and I think they can put all kinds of attachments on it but it has a little knife on it they're gonna use and they're gonna use that to cut all the fungal plaque off of her nasal cavity they're gonna try to get as much as they they possibly can mm -hmm. there goes a dog on her stretcher that's sad oh. yeah this is a big-time animal hospital it's one of the only ones in Northeast Oklahoma so uh, we're fortunate that we're only an hour away and um, anyways back to the story I'm getting off topic again they're gonna go in scrape all that plaque the fungal plaque off of her nasal cavity try to get all the roots and all that then they are going to have a, a different type of surgeon come in and drill a hole up here somewhere she talked like two holes maybe two holes two holes know. up up here she said they're gonna drill a hole anyways <clears throat> up in her nasal and then the medicine that they specially compounded for her they're going, going to, uh, I don't know, they're going to squirt it in there and they're going to let it do its thing. It's an antifungal type of medicine, a very, very strong one. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to put a different type of a, a cream in there. It's like, like said, a gel. It's like a white, really thick cream and that's an antifungal as well. And she said it could come out for two to three days. Like it could just keep coming out. Yeah. And there's going to be blood. It's going to be nasty. It is a very, very bad procedure to uh, have to go through. For anybody. It's going to be very painful for her. So she's going to be on pain meds and all that. And yeah. uh, we kind of explained to the nurse that she's kind of been on a liquid diet here the past couple days. Right. And what else? Missing anything? That's all I can think of. Yeah. And the procedure, she didn't really say how long. She said probably an hour to two hours. So probably by two o'clock. Yeah. They'll probably call us yeah. after it's done and let us know how <laughs> she did. And they're going to try to go ahead and give her some pain meds before she wakes up. That way, when she wakes up, she's not hurting real bad. Kind of like last time when she woke up, she just went crazy from the sedation. Right. Because she was but in a lot of pain. It'll be... We're, we'll be here all day. I mean, it's going to be a long process. It'll probably be 3, 4, 5 o'clock before we're even starting home. So. Right. But that's the wonderful thing about being here at a nice hospital like this for animals is they will actually monitor her. You know, if you go to your normal vet or clinic, they're going to do the procedure and probably send you right home with her. This place they is can, packed. Yeah, it is packed. They got dogs coming in and out. There's almost crazy. every parking lot. Yeah, Every uh, parking spot in the parking lot is 
full. Yep. Boy, I sound awful. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, we'll wait until we hear back something <coughs> and give you guys an update. Yeah. So, thanks for following along. Doing well. Most importantly, Daisy's doing well. Oh, good to hear. Just, uh, finished, yeah, we finished this uh, procedure a few minutes ago, so she woke up a whole lot easier than she did last time. So, uh, we used a different, a little bit of stronger narcotic as part of that, and I think she's really doing better with that, tolerating that better, controlling some of that discomfort. Um, today's procedure was quite a bit more invasive. You know, we ended up going in and, and uh, trying to remove as much of that fungus and those plaques as possible, and really I think it, it worked out quite well to do that. Good, That's good. good. And then we ended up, uh, you know, drilling into that sinus, flushing that out, removing all of that junk that's in there and then infusing it with the clotrimazole uh, solution and cream so definitely concerned uh, happy that that happened pleased with the outcome i think it looks really really good and the big question is how long will this last and kind of what type of recovery can we get so um typically i mean there's going to be drainage she's got right night and she's destruction and that's I want to see things start clearing up and her feeling better, okay? Okay. I'm going to have a little bit of recovery, probably a little bit of a sinus headache going on for the next uh, uh, few days. Let's just see how she does on recovery. But overall, I'm pleased. We will send her home more of the pain med. I'm going to send her home more carprofen uh, for the anti-inflammatory. On that drug, I want to, she's in the middle of the 27th, having a 100 milligram dose because I'm uh, giving you quite a bit of the uh, of the drug, I don't know, it's like a three or four day, this could be like a, like a chronic treatment, I'm going a little bit of a more conservative dose, okay? Okay. So just really watch it uh, and, and uh, keep her on that medication for pain. I'm also sending her up with something called gabapentin. Gabapentin is another medication that we can use for pain. And uh, I want to see, you know, if she needs it, she can have it. She doesn't okay. have to have it, but if you think she's uncomfortable, she can absolutely have it. Sure. Okay? So very good overall she'll continue on the trebinafine uh and you got that in the liquid is that right yes on yes it is and is she taking that okay we've been having her on a liquid diet for the last two days because she hasn't her mouth has acted like it's kind of been sore or something so she hasn't been eating her regular food so we've had her on like milk and eggs and we've been mixing in that medication with that Okay. Yep. As long as she takes it all, that's fine. The uh, big thing is that she just needs to take it. Okay. I don't want. Sometimes people mix it in with food or mix it in with something, and then they'll eat part of it, then eat a little bit of it later. And so, just to make sure she gets consistent dosing, make sure she's all at one time. Okay. Gotcha. As, as far as her medication is concerned. Got yep. Me. Yeah. Well, she's doing well. I probably plan it on her going home probably around 3:30 or so. Are you back home in Salina? Or are you still no. We uh, we've been around Tulsa. We just now pulled back into the parking lot, so we're fine. Okay. Probably. Why don't you check with us around three? Then I'll try to get her out as soon as possible. So, but uh, why don't you give us a call at three? That way she'll hopefully be fully awake and ready to go by then. Okay. Okay. One last question for you. Um, yes. Do Do we need to? Do we need to keep any vit vitamin K on hand in case she gets a severe bleeding again? Yeah, good, good question. No, she doesn't. So those, the nose is a very vascular structure. Okay. They're potentially going to be bleeding. It's not a coagulation problem. It's not a, I can't clot my blood because of vitamin K deficiency unless she gets into rat poison. And so that should not be an issue. Gotcha. So uh, that's not an issue. There's a product called Unan Bio. It's a... I'll spell it out in your discharge instructions. It's a Chinese herb, and don't ask me what's in it. I don't <laughs> okay. know. Some people think it's actually it is, it's quackery. It's crazy. Sure, it's sure. And they like the label even says a like secret ingredient or something weird on it. So whatever. Um, people that I know, and it's been handed down for a long, uh, multiple doctors, is that it can help control bleeding. So some of these patients that have like bleeding abdominal tumor or something like that, it can help uh, uh, with clotting. Uh, they say that like police officers will take it and never get shot and take long. It's, it, it's weird. Okay. Uh, however, you can order it off Amazon. It's, okay. You know, from China. I have no idea what's in it. So she, you can give her a couple of those capsules uh, two to three times a day if she started to have more bleeding. That would be fun. Okay. And as far as care, as soon as we get home, does she need to be isolated or what's your... What's your Not isolated. She needs to be in a closed 
quiet area, though. She's going to have quite the sinus headache. I wouldn't have her out doing stuff with the, the herd or anything like that. I would actually keep her probably, I don't you know, put up if she can. Now, she's one of those dogs that if you put her up in a in a bin or something, she's just going to freak out, then don't. But I, I don't think, it's, I don't know how busy she is as far as, you know, warding off her coach and stuff, but she's not going to want to be in a, sure. in a fight or something like that for a few days. So uh, I wouldn't have her necessarily working like that. Yeah, I can keep her. I can keep her kind of confined uh, around the goats. She freaks out when she's not with them. But right now, it's very quiet, and we do have another dog that can help out. So, I didn't know if I just needed to yeah, keep her good. away from just the elements or what. Chill with the goats? No, not for the elements. But she wants to chill with the goats because that's what she likes to do. Is just literally just lay around. And yes. Watch the goats. That's fine. Uh, if she especially keep them in a kind of a pen area. Sure. But if it's something that's out in the field where she's actually truly working, I would wait uh, probably a week for that. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. All right. Well, thank you so right, much, we'll sir. Be around three o'clock and see how things are going. Hey, you're very welcome. Alrighty, okay. thank you. Well, thank God. He said it went well, so uh, that's kind of a relief. That's a relief. Uh, for sure, because. I have read that sometimes dogs don't even make it out of this procedure and he says he thinks it went quite well so there you go um I it, was worried. it is important that we keep giving her the meds and like he said you have to make sure that she gets all the meds twice a day so we gotta really stay yeah. on top of that but uh there you go i guess as soon as we get in the in the truck we'll do a little update video and see how she's doing um we i'm, I'm kind of relieved that if you guys are new to our channel or if you're just watching this video you guys are probably saying why aren't you keeping that dog in the house and stuff and guys if you've been if you haven't been following us i know that if you have you understand she's a true working dog that has her number one bond with the goats the goats have a bond with her she has a bond with the goats if she's not with them she freaks out and gets upset she cries if the goats aren't with her they're super stressed out uh I just text my dad i said dad will you go check on the goats just to see what they're doing if they're out in the field because we got neighbor dogs and stuff. He said, no, they're hanging out at the barn. This was literally like five minutes before the doctor called and they're waiting for Daisy to get back home. So anyway, that's a whole different conversation, but that is why I asked the doctor, what is your rules on bringing her home? Do we need to put her in the house? Which we probably know better than that isn't gonna work, but do we need to keep her like confined or whatever? I think what, we're, what we'll probably do, we'll have to watch her but what I'm planning on doing is just taking her home. And if she wants to go lay in the grass, she can go lay in the grass. Uh, you'll be home full time tomorrow. Or I will be too, probably. And uh, we can keep an eye on her. We're not going to pin her up because she does get kind of freaked out. But we'll see what what condition she is. Um, we actually just went to lunch with a, uh, a friend of ours that is a subscriber here on YouTube, Gwen. Yeah. Um, it was awesome. She she wanted to come help us out with Daisy, and she said, "Hey, I want to help you out. I want to take you guys to lunch." So we appreciate you so much, yes, Gwen. Thank you, Gwen. We went and ate some Mexican food here in Tulsa and had a good two-hour conversation, and it kind of took our mind off of all this stuff. So thank yeah. you so much. It's always a blessing to have all you friends here on YouTube, and especially the ones that are local that we can meet up with and. Uh, just have conversations have coffee or whatever so yeah uh, we insisted to take her to lunch and she's like no you're not <laughs> thank you so yeah. much Glenn. she is a awesome person and uh, this is a, actually the third time i've met her she actually bought one of our pigs from us and last year she went to a uh birthday lunch that we had so, yeah yeah thanks gwen so guys we're gonna get off here for now um like the doctor said we got about it's 2 20 now he said to call them about three o'clock and he'll see if Daisy's ready to go, so yeah. we'll get you updated. Hey, it's Dr. Hodges calling about Daisy. Yes, sir. Hey there. So, uh, she's awake. Now, listen, uh, when we, I'm just warning you kind of what's going to look like. <laughs> we shade this area on her head, and that's when the, the drill into that funnel sinus, and then we close that up. We typically uh, glue your super glue that's for suture for skin. Uh, but uh, with that stuff, and we instill all that fluid, and then we put antifungal cream in her sinus and drains out of her nose. She's gonna have just this pink, reddish, white drainage coming out of her nose. Okay. That's the big. That's uh, it's all about contact time. We want all of that coated with this stuff. So I'm gonna wipe her nose. Now, are you in a vehicle that uh, you have a towel or something down, or in case you get yep. or she sneezes something? Yeah, I got a blanket okay. now. Okay, perfect, good. All right, we'll wipe her nose before we bring her out. Let me get up to one of my texts as soon as I get one of them available. 
They'll get her together and then we'll get her out to you here shortly, okay? Okay. What spot are you in? I'm in number two. Number two. Perfect. All right. We'll get everything ready for her and get her out. And then uh, I'll send you an email later this evening that summarizes everything we did, okay? Okay. Sounds good. <coughs> Great. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. able to walk out on her own this time. Yeah, I know. It went much better this time. Yeah, I just needed a little bit more pink. Hey guys, I just brought Daisy out and uh, she looks pretty bad. She's got a whole bald spot shaved on her head where they drilled the hole. She's got staples in her, in her head. I'll try to show you guys that a little closer. I'll get a picture or some video close up of her when we get home and open her up. Uh, she's still kind of sedated right now and uh, she's got all that medicine and stuff running out of her nose like the doctor said. So we're just going to try to get her home quick, put some air on her and keep her comfortable so yeah. as soon as we get home we'll uh update you guys come on daisy she was ready to get out Oh, 
Come here. Hi, baby. Give me a hug. Hi. Give me a hug. Poor baby girl. All right. Um. So we're home, guys. Like I said, the doctor said it went well. This is what her staples look like. That is where they went in. I'm scared to even touch you too much, girl. That's where they went in and drilled the hole through her skull into her nasal cavity and packed it full of that white medicine that's coming out now. The doctor said the longer that stays in, the better. That way it gets uh, the fungal plaque gets a good reaction from it and it hopefully kills all that bad stuff. So anyways, we're going to get the barn set up and everything and make sure she's good to go. She just needs to get out here and rest. Hopefully she'll just lay in the grass. And like the doctor said, he said don't. He's not too worried about keeping her put up in a little pen or anything as long as she's not out fighting coyotes and stuff. So I think she'll be just at home. Um, she'll stress out more if we do try to pin her up. And now that she's with the goats, she'll feel a lot better. And for about a week, we're going to lock her and the goats up in the barn during the night. Yes. Just so we don't have to worry about any weird things happening. And uh, Rachel's home all day now, so she'll be able to keep a good eye on her. So, you glad to be home? I gotta take your bandage off. Doctor, you need to take your bandage off. I know it. I don't even know what you want. You want your belly rub? You want your belly rub? Mojo, what do you think? Daisy, did you get stitches? She has staples in her head. You hear Papa? There you go. Poor girl. And she got a funny looking haircut. Yep. <laughs> okay, guys, so. It has been two days since Daisy's surgery, and uh, sadly, we just want to let you guys know that she did not make it. Um, we brought her home, and we had high hopes. We thought everything was normal, and we never could get her to eat. We couldn't get her to take her pain meds. Um, we finally was able to force one down her throat, but sadly, she just couldn't overcome the surgery. We don't know if something went wrong. We don't know what happened, but a little bit of the story. Uh, today is actually day three of since her surgery. Uh, she made it two days after. Um, yesterday is when she actually passed away. And uh, we'll talk about that story. To kind of fill in on the previous video, we just decided to make this all one. That way people weren't asking, how's Daisy doing and this Hi. and that. So yesterday morning, uh, like every other morning, we got up early and we came out to check on Daisy hoping that she would feel better and uh she you know, have an appetite the doctor warned us that she would have a horrible horrible headache for several days so we kind of figured she wouldn't have an appetite but he told us to try to get her to eat as soon as we got home from the surgery which she had no desire at all to even eat a treat she didn't want to smell no food uh, we tried everything and it just she wouldn't eat nothing she just wanted to lay around um, she would get up every 30 minutes or so and try to stay up with the goats as they were grazing and stuff you know we let her out in the daytime with the goats because she just they don't like being locked up in the barn and all that so she was free just to go out she wasn't running she wasn't fighting anything off we were here every day that we she were was monitoring sick. her 24 7. pretty much all she was doing is just laying around in the grass um, the goats would still go out and graze and browse around for leaves and <clears throat> weeds and everything and she would kind of She wanted to be with them So she would just find a spot and lay down and be comfortable and every so often she'd get up and go get a drink of water All the way back up here So we're thinking well, that's a good sign. She's doing better But yesterday morning we got up and came out and she just didn't look right It looked like she was barely breathing her breath was just real shallow her eyes didn't look right. She had no desire to want to eat or drink. And uh, Rachel and I tried to give her some food, uh, milk, and some chicken broth with a syringe. And uh, she just couldn't swallow. I don't know what the deal was. So I said, I think we need to take her to the vet. So uh, she was actually laying underneath the kids' little playhouse, which yeah. is about 100 yards away from the barn. 
So I picked her up and I carried her all the way to the gate and I, I called Rachel. I said, we got we to gotta get the truck. We got to get her going now. And uh, So I sat in the back seat with her and we called uh, the prior vet on the way. And we told him, look, she, she is not doing well. She just had the surgery and this is the second day after and she has not eaten or hardly drank anything and she's just not doing well at all um and at that point she was bleeding from her mouth yeah. which she had not done before um and i think that was in part of us trying to syringe feed her and she did swallow the milk maybe two it times was very hard for her to swallow and so i just kind of massaged her throat and rubbed it and then after the second time she swallowed the milk then she started like kind of coughing. coughing and then some quite a bit of blood came up and then that's when she really started having she just wanted to lay down like on her issue. side and and you could tell she wasn't there like her eyes kind of glazed over it was it was not good at all so kevin we loaded her up in the truck and i rode in the back seat with her and she just she laid her head on me the whole entire time and she was responsive yeah. um she looked up at me a couple times and sat up in the seat a couple times and laid back down and so the whole time we're on our way over there it takes us about 15 to 20 minutes to get to that vet and the whole time i'm thinking well kevin and i were talking you know if they can just get her stabilized you know Let's see if they will keep her maybe a day or two so they can get an IV in her and get her her pain meds that get she needs. Get her some nutrition and, just, and you know, fluids. Get her stabilized because she was not recovering well here. She was very lethargic and she, she was just weak. She couldn't even walk at this point hardly. We were, I mean, we were doing everything we knew to do. Um, so basically we get there in the column and it's still curbside service. They come out and they get her. They come and check her vitals and stuff. I said... This is an emergency. Is there any way you guys can kind of rush it? And they said, yes, call us when you get here and we'll send the vet tech out to see if she's stable or not. Well, they came out and checked her and I guess they determined she wasn't stable because it was just a few minutes later. Um, they said, hey, can you carry her in here? We'll get started on her. So I carried her in there and about five minutes later, the doctor actually comes out and says, She's responsive to me. Um, I think she might have aspirated during the procedure, the surgery. I called the hospital where it took place and the doctor that was on uh, working on the weekend or whatever said, yeah, it's possible. Sometimes they aspirate during that procedure. And I'm guessing that's where they swallow something into their lungs somehow or another. I don't know for sure. But anyway, she said that she said they're going to try to give her an x-ray. They were going to try to give her some pain meds. And get some fluids in her. Get some fluids in her. We asked them if they could give her some fluids. And I told them that she hasn't been able to take any of her pain medications or anti-inflammatory except the one pill that we got down her. So, so, so they go ahead and they take her to the room to do the x-ray and stuff. And it wasn't three or four more minutes after the first time the doctor came. She came back out and she said, I need to know how far you guys want me to go with this. We're losing her. She's crashing on us. Um, I think her heart's stopping. And I said, me and Rachel both just said, do what you have to do. You know, we've already came this far. Do what you have to do to keep her alive. And uh, so she went back in, and it was just a couple minutes later. She came back out, and uh, the doctor said, I think she's brain dead. I think, I think her heart stopped enough where she's not getting oxygen. I think she's brain dead. You guys need to come in now. We pretty much have her on, I guess it's life support. They had they her were on, She couldn't for breathe her. on her own. That's what it was. And I begged the doctor when she said that she was crashing, please let me go in with her. Yep. I'm sorry, I'm emotional still. So we got to go in and um, her eyes were still open. I don't, I don't think she was she there. She was not. She was not there. They were breathing for her and. Uh, she was not responding at all. I. So, I, I held her. I. I had a meltdown, uh, you know, in the vet's office. My heart was broken because we intend when we took her over there, we had no idea that she was going to pass away. I mean, I was thinking that they would get her stabilized, stable, 
And she, she's a four-year-old, five-year-old dog that was very healthy before this whole uh, Aspergillus fungal infection took place. And uh, we just thought, you know, hearing the doctor at the surgery at the hospital just talk about how successful it was and this and that, that she would overcome it with no problem. And we had high hopes on all of it. And then it just went south quickly. Yeah. And, and the, uh, the vet did say that they thought that she went um, septic. Um, Maybe. It could have went to her blood or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's such a blur. It, it, it all happened so quick. And in the middle of all that, it was the morning of Kaya's night. birthday party day. So we, you know, of course, we always put the animal first when yes. there was an emergency. Uh, I called my dad. He rushed over to the house and uh, stayed with the kids. And uh, we were still able, able to have her birthday party and all that. But we got home after we got Daisy loaded back into the truck. Um, she was gone at that point and then we got home and told the kids and I asked them I said do you that want, was heartbreaking do you want to help us go pick a spot to bury her and I kind of already had it in my head where the perfect spot would be is the place where she always laid out here in the big pasture just during these summer days you could look out and she would always be laying out here and uh, underneath these kind of shade trees and stuff and uh, We'll show you guys where that's at in a minute, but we came out and got the Kubota with the backhoe and dug a hole and got her buried and Rachel and the kids and my dad and I and we did that little service and then we carried on with our day. It was hard, but you know, me and Rachel both were always taught when you're knocked down, just come back stronger and uh, you know, we've always got a game plan. Nothing always works out like you plan, but you got to have plan A, plan B, have different plans in place and we're down to zero livestock guardian dogs on this side of the pasture. So Mojo has been kind of stepping it up. We've been letting him in here. He goes and marks his territory and stuff. Uh, we don't keep him in here because he still knows that he's supposed to be over there guarding the other goat herd. But uh, like I said, when you're knocked down, you come back stronger. So we're looking at now, uh, we're looking pretty hard. I am looking all over online, all over the United States for some dogs. Uh, I want some Anatolian dogs, but we're just trying to fill out everybody that we're talking to and trying to replace them. But we're going to go with two. Uh, we might not get one or we might not get both at the same time because we want to start breeding these dogs maybe in the future if everything works out. So what we're looking at doing is getting two unrelated, a male and a female to keep over here and just go with that route. So Our plan was to actually let daisy let train daisy them. train them and we were going to put them in the pen where the little bucklings are being weaned and so that they could actually watch daisy from the other side of the fence and learn from her that way and we were actually going to put maybe the ducks over there with the two pups so they would have you know an yeah. adjustment to to ducks and chickens. some chickens because you know, we have that on our farm. We want them to be friendly to uh, poultry. Right. That was that was our game plan, and you know, all this was playing through our head. We were already thinking ahead. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. When she, as soon as she gets a hundred percent, and then we get hit with, yeah, what happened? And we we sure didn't want to have to ever have to do this video. No, it's heartbreaking. Our family is and our farms in mourning. Um, yeah. It was a very hard day. The goats are still not adjusted to her being gone. No. You know, there's, everybody knows. She's everybody gone. can tell. The Mojo Skeeter, you can just tell when we come feed. You know, Mojo and Skeeter would always meet us at the gate to see Daisy, and we always fed Daisy first with these goats because ladies first. But we always joked about that, which that was just our ritual every every evening and feeding time. So it's just, it's it's hard getting adjusted. This is day one after her being gone. She's been gone a whole day now. and uh, We tried to be in good spirits, you know, the best yep. we could for Kai's birthday. We didn't get home till 1130 and her party started at one. All right. So I didn't, it was actually a good though because it gave us something to do. We had a lot of family here yeah. and uh, it helped keep our minds off of it. It did. But the reality is here, uh, she was a true blessing to our farm. She was the guardian of our farm. So she was it's kind of like family. starting over. But uh, we've had we've had lots of support. Uh, we've had fellow YouTubers, tons of friends. We shared it on Facebook and stuff. And all our family has been super supportive. We've had uh, other farms reach out to us. 
uh, Bodark Kikos, Josh down in Texas, he reached out to us and said he had two adults if we were willing to take them. Uh, I don't think, I don't know if they would work out with what we're wanting to do, but we appreciate him offering that. And uh, like I said, we're, we're, we got things in place. So we're bringing Mojo out. He's doing his perimeter check out here, marking his territory. That kind of tells other dogs, predators, bobcats, coyotes, whatever, that there's a big dog over here because he's marking trees and fence line and stuff. And he's still coming out and barking at night and all that type of stuff. But anyways, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's rough. I don't know. We'll get through this. Every night we're locking the goats up because we don't want anything to come at night. Because if they do, it's only Mojo. And he actually cannot get into this pen without being locked in here full time. And if he's in here full time, he can't be over there with the other goats full time. And he knows that's his primary job. So that's why we got to get the additional dogs and start training them over here. Yeah. But we love you guys so much for all the support. You guys have been so supportive of us through this whole journey. Ever since I made the video where Daisy was on the trail cam with the coyotes. YouTube, the views have just went up crazy. Daisy was a YouTube, I guess YouTube famous pretty much in my eyes. Uh, she wasn't just famous in no, our eyes. She carried a lot of our videos. The majority of our videos, if you guys go back to our channel and you start scrolling down, you'll see tons and tons of videos with thumbnails with Daisy in it. So She was just a big part of our farm. It, I mean, it wasn't about the views for us. No, she but was just that people wonderful. loved Daisy. Yes, they, they seen did. They seen how important she was to us she, in the farm. She was just awesome, and we shared that with everyone just because she was such a huge part of our farm. And... You know, you guys started to love her and got attached to her. And like Kevin said, we really, we appreciate every single one of you. Yes. Your prayers, your messages that we've received. Everything. Everything, your donations. Um, it's all went we towards. We could never repay our, all you guys back for yes. all the support we've got. All every, the text messages, Facebook messages, It has helped emails. tremendously. You know, we love you guys. You guys are our... our our HHF family yep. we like to say and we hated to have to break the news to you guys but you could probably see if we did not tell you guys yeah. how probably some sadness you know for a little while with us yep. um, we're just gonna go through a period of mourning and it, that's never easy because no. it's just a void on our farm when you lose a family member like that and such an important piece of your farm so we just appreciate you guys and you know we we did everything we could to save her i mean she's seen three different vets we did anything and everything we knew to do to to get her recovered and daisy fought hard she did she was a fighter she was a tough dog and just this was just too much for her body she i don't know what happened we still don't have the exact answers i wish i knew but it was God's plan and honestly even before she passed looking at her being in so much pain and just not recovering she's been well, miserable for a while with her nose being like that and it took so long to get that procedure planned with the referrals and everything she was just every day bleeding from her nose and I think we she had done right. I think we had done decided that we, we would not have, do another procedure no. we would just she, I don't know what we would have do, but we knew it was rough on her, right. you know, and, and plus she had the tick-borne disease before she got severe with the, the fungus. The lick, yeah. yeah, and it's just a combination of everything. It just, she, she tried so hard and we tried hard and you guys prayed so hard for her. So we're going to wrap this video up here in a second, but I want to show you where we chose to put her in the ground at before we uh, get off here. And we're not done. We just, we haven't worked. We're going to make her a little yeah, area. Yeah, we just had to do it quickly yesterday. Before the party. Okay guys, so here is her final resting spot. It's just right out here from the barn. Our house is right there. We can look out that window and we can see her grave site. She's underneath. All these big, nice trees are not all leafed out yet, but this was one of her favorite spots to lay. The goats would always come kind of lay in this evening shade. Their main water source is right there, so they always come and rested around their water source. So this is where I imagine Daisy laying whenever we would come out and just check on them and everything. Like Rachel said, we're not done with this gravesite. We just got the hole dug yesterday, 
and then we had family coming within an hour so we had to get it done pretty quick um one little story i wanted to share with you guys which is really weird as soon as i pulled the backhoe up here and started digging the hole we heard this weird noise and uh we look over and a swarm of honeybees just left our hive and we sat here and watched it as we were digging the hole and everything and they landed over there in that cedar tree so our bee colony went from two hives to three hives so i just thought that was pretty cool i wanted to share that with you i might paint a little daisy or something on that little hive and uh call it daisy's hive i don't know hopefully they'll stay around like i said it's a swarm from our other hive so we don't know what was going on but we added a hive so something positive did come out of yesterday kai had a good birthday uh they Although, were heartbroken but everybody was heartbroken everybody tried right to be in good spirit so guys thank you so much we love you guys uh leave a comment down below like this video and we're sorry to have to share this news with you but yes. you know we like to keep it real good or bad and uh unfortunately this was one of the bad stories so don't forget to subscribe thank you guys so much <laughs> for all you. your support we appreciate you guys we love you guys